Guardians, I found yet another broken Warlock Solar build. Now, this build works off having unlimited incinerator snaps, unlimited fire bolts, maximum scorch stacks, and so many ignitions that your screen is just going to be constantly filled with explosions and fire. Now, if you guys are liking what you're seeing on the screen right now, make sure you stick around and I will go through everything you need to know to get this build in your hands and use this with your fire teams. Now, this build is not only great for just overall ad clear, it's a lot of fun to use in that medium difficulty content like Vanguard Ops, some of the weekly missions, and the seasonal content this season. But this build is also great in the end game of Destiny. One of the best parts about this is this will automatically take care of any unstoppable champions that you come across with pure Scorch stacks causing a ignition, therefore stunning the unstoppable. But it is just great for making mass ignitions in end game content. Now I'm sure as a Warlock main, we are all dreading the day that the Starfire Protocol gets nerfed and I can guarantee you that nerf is coming next season. There's been a few leaks. We don't know if it's confirmed or not, but I believe the Starfire Protocol is actually getting nerfed next season. So why not take this build under your wing and give it a try? It could be your next go-to build. So the rotation for this build is fairly simple. This one works around the incinerator snap, but most importantly, it works around the heat rises perk where it gives you melee energy back as long as you're in the air when you get a kill. So what you want to do is throw out your incinerator snap and try and aim for three or four enemies. And on top of that, you make sure you want to jump right before you throw that incinerator snap out. Therefore, it puts your guardian in the air and then it gives you some melee energy back. So the incinerator snap will throw out five five sort of fire bolts in the general direction you are facing. As long as majority of these hit, it will apply 100 Scorch stacks, therefore creating a ignition. If they do not create an ignition, it is because you do not have enough Scorch stacks on that said target. So what you can do to fix this is then throw out a additional melee causing the ignition. If this doesn't do it, or you only have one melee on cooldown, you can also throw out a fireball grenade, which will cause enough stacks to cause an ignition. Better yet, you can even use a Phoenix Dive to apply more Scorch stacks. So you have plenty of ways to apply all of these Scorch stacks, therefore create an ignition. Anything you do in this loadout will then refund all of your ability energy back, causing a complete 100% rotation. Not to mention the fact that with the fragments that we have selected, our ignitions will then also create more Scorch stacks on enemies, and these Scorch stacks will just keep spreading, meaning unlimited ignitions, heaps of damage, unlimited incentives incinerator snaps. This build is one of my favorites going into Season of the Deep, so make sure you put this one on. This one works a lot around the incinerator snap and getting maximum scorch stacks to then cause a ignition. Now, what makes this incinerator snap come back so quickly is heat rises. You want to make sure you have heat rises on, and in particular, if you look down the bottom of the description, it says final blows while airborne will increase the duration of heat rises and grant melee energy back. So you don't have to actually have heat rises active to proc this buff here. As long as you are in the air, and you get a kill, it will then grant you melee energy back. So this makes this build insane. So if you combine heat rises with incinerator snap and then these fragments to create maximum scorch stack, therefore huge ignitions, it's gonna be absolutely insane. First slot, I like to use the Ember of Char. Soul ignitions spread scorch to affected target. Wonderful. The Ember of Eruption, your soul ignitions have increased area of effect. Also awesome. The Ember of Ashes, you apply more scorch stacks to the targets. And finally, Ember of Searing, defeating a scorch target will then grant a fire sprite. These four work very well together and you wanna make sure you have all four of these fragments on alongside the heat rises, incinerator snap. Combine this with the Phoenix Dive for some great healing ability and also to apply more Scorch stack and the Fireball Grenade. Now the Fireball Grenades this season are incredible. They work so well with some of these seasonal artifact mods. Another must have is the Flare Up and the Rain of Fire Bolts. So when you have Rain of Fire Bolts on, you're going to get two grenades, and the Flare Up basically means when you damage enemies with your Fire Bolt, you're going to add more Scorch Stacks. On top of that, it's going to spawn a Fire Sprite near them when you damage a Combatant. On top of this, I like to use Solar Surge as well, Therefore, when you pick up these fire sprites, it's going to give you an armor charge. And we'll get into that later as to what you'll be using these armor charges for. Anything else, it's completely up to you. Authorized Mod Solar is also another good as this helps getting more solar mods on your build. But that basically sums it up for the artifact. For the weapons, it doesn't matter what you use because you're going to be using just your abilities anyway. So put on whatever you want. Now jumping into the mods on the helmet, because we're going to be doing so much damage with our melee, I like to use double hands on. And basically this is just going to gain super energy on melee kill. Now we're going to be getting a lot of melee kills. So we're going to be getting a lot of supercharge. Now in the third slot, I like to use Ashes of Asset purely because I don't feel like wasting nine points on triple hands-on. We are going to be throwing a few grenades in the mix, so Ash to Assets is also going to help here. 
The exotic for the build is the Claws of Ahamkara. What this does is it gives you an additional melee charge. So why not just have two melee charges? Sometimes when you throw out the snap, it's not going to give you full energy back. So having two melee charges is just going to overall help us have more melees and generate more melee energy back as we go. For the mods on the gauntlets, I like to use Momentum Transfer. So when we deal damage with a grenade, it's going to reduce our melee and Impact Induction, vice versa. When we deal damage with melee, it's going to reduce our grenade because this build works off getting as many scorch stacks as we can out there having both the melee and grenade up all the time is very good and again because this build is mainly focused on the melee side of this i like to use melee kickstart and this is where we're going to be using our armor charges so as we go along we're going to be generating fire sprites once we pick them up it's going to give us armor charge it states when your melee energy is fully expended you're going to get a huge chunk of melee energy back but in turn it's going to take away those armor charges because we're going to have so many armor charges this is not a problem basically every second or fourth melee that we throw out we're going to get those melee energy back with all the armor charges you do feel like spicing this build up a little bit there is a couple guns that can make this build even better the first of that being the skyburner's oath the best thing about the skyburner's oath is it will also apply more scorch stacks to the enemies you are shooting so you're just going to have so many scorch stacks so many ignitions this one is great to add into the mix and the second one is the traveler's chosen with the sidearm buff coming to destiny 2 this gun could be insanely good in the right hands and what the exotic perk with the traveler's chosen is based on the amount of kills you get with this sidearm you can then hold your reload button therefore transferring that light energy back to you and then granting granting class ability grenade energy and melee energy back to you so this one is just inherently great because it means more abilities from this scorch spam moving on to the chest piece this is completely up to you i like to just run triple arc solar and void resistance you can put on whatever you want charged up works okay but there's really no need for this you can put on some in emergency reinforcements if you feel like you're dying a bit too much i like to just run triple resistance there's no need not to now for the boots i like to use stacks on stacks so when you pick up an orb of power as well you're going to get an armor charge so now when we pick up orbs and fire sprites we're going to be getting armor charges this is great so we're also going to be running two invigorations when we pick up orbs of power it's going to reduce our melee cooldown now because of the amount of orbs that we can generate this season this is awesome for the melee charge. Finally, moving on to the bond, I like to use utility kickstart. So again, when we pick up those orbs, it's going to give us armor charge alongside fire sprites. So now we have two methods of getting armor charge. We can pick up fire sprites or we can pick up orbs of power. This is great. On top of this, the Phoenix Dive is a very good heal tool. So if we do feel like using a Phoenix Dive, if we do have three armor charges, it's going to give us a good chunk back of our class ability, meaning we can get that Phoenix Dive back quicker and Phoenix Dive is our go-to healing in this build. So if we feel low, we just can use a Phoenix Dive. And I like to use Double Outreach as well. So when we do use that Phoenix Dive, it's also going to give us more melee energy back. Basically, Guardians, that is all I have for you today. Hopefully, you guys enjoy this one. Definitely try this one out. It is a lot of fun in PvE activities. Like and subscribe for more, and I'll catch you guys later.